Hi, Charlotte County. Thank you so much for joining me today to learn a little bit about the National Park Service Museum collections, why we collect them, and why they're important. My name is Kate Everett, and I'm the museum curator for Bryce Canyon National Park, Cedar Breaks National Monument, and Zion National Park, where I'm actually currently duty stationed. I've been with the Park Service since 2012, and in my NPS career, I've held a number of other cultural resource and curator positions at different parks and regional support centers, including Gulf Islands National Seashore, the Southeast Regional Office in Atlanta, Fort Sumter and Fort Moultrie National Historical Park, and Charles Pinckney National Historic Site. So to understand why the National Park Service collects what it collects, you first need to know a little bit about the National Park System. So in my experience, a lot of the time when people talk about the National Park Service, they think about the 63 national parks, the capital N, capital P sites like Yosemite, Yellowstone, Zion, the Grand Canyon, or a little closer to home for you, Biscayne or Everglades. But the national park system is actually comprised of 423 total units across the United States, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, and American Samoa. The vast majority of these units bear other designations such as National Monument, National Battlefield, National Historic Site, National Scenic Trail, or National Seashore, just to name a few. Each of these units was set aside to be protected and preserved for a specific reason, and those reasons are codified in the park's enabling legislations. As seen in this slide, the NPS preserves not only beautiful natural vistas, but sites of cultural significance like battlefields, presidential homes, or even the idea of seeing the USA in your Chevrolet. To me, the most interesting sites in the NPS are those that are dedicated to the preservation of whole cultures, like Cane River Creole National Historical Park in Natchitoches, Louisiana, or of unique parts of the American experience, like New Orleans Jazz. This is the only park in the NPS that preserves and interprets this form of uniquely American music. So the reason why each park was created, that enabling legislation that we talked about, will mostly drive what is included in their individual museum collections. So national battlefields will collect objects that are related to the battle that was fought there, while New Orleans jazz may collect instruments, musical recordings, or oral histories with musicians. So why does the NPS collect things to begin with? Isn't the NPS a land management agency? Well, Yes, but in order to protect the land that we set aside for the enjoyment of this and future generations, we have to make people care about the sites that we protect. And having museum collections aid in visitors' understanding of why a site is important and worth saving. Museum collections also establish important scientific baselines so that we can keep track of the overall health of ecosystems within the site. One of the best stories of museum collections coming to the aid of science is from the study conducted in the 1960s regarding the massive die-off of peregrine falcons and raptors. Scientists had a theory that DDT pesticide runoff into streams was poisoning the fish, which in turn was having a negative effect on the whole food chain, including falcons and eagles. By studying raptor eggs housed in various museum collections across the country, scientists discovered that DDT was causing the shells of the eggs to thin to such a degree that the egg was no longer viable, and use of DDT was later banned as a result of this study. So what kinds of stuff does the NPS collect? NPS collections fall into three broad categories, archives, natural history, 
and cultural objects. Most parks will collect something from all three categories, although this really kind of depends on the, the park itself. So every park will have archives, um, but whether it has cultural objects or natural history objects or more of either one of those things really depends on the site. So for example, um, Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island will probably have more cultural objects in its collection than it will natural history objects just because the, the site there doesn't have a whole lot to yield as far as natural history items. Uh, so what are park archives? Um, archival collections are usually the largest component of any NPS museum collection. They include personal papers, manuscripts, film, photographs, oral histories, maps, scientific research, and resource management records. These records contain information essential for understanding the park's past, natural and cultural interrelationships, changes over time, as well as NPS management of the park. And uh, they, they fall into um, two, two sort of broad categories here, uh, pre and post NPS management. So pre NPS management will be those um, manuscripts and, and historic records like the Snee Farm plat map that you see on the left hand side of the slide. Um, so this is a map um, from 1818 from the Charles Pinckney National Historic Site archives and Charles Pinckney being the uh, principal architect for the United States Constitution and Snee Farm being his country home um, just outside of Charleston, South Carolina. So he is um, planning out his plantation there. Um, post NPS management records include resource management records like the this 1934 page from the superintendent's annual report from Zion National Park. So um, resource management records um, are a comprehensive um, set of records that tell you all about parks management and why certain decisions were made and what impacts on the park those decisions had. So it's a vital source of information when park managers um, are, are trying to make a decision because they can look at uh, previous actions and see whether that had a positive or negative impact um, on park um, resources and visitors. Uh, there are also a lot of photographs in park archives and these can fall into either the historic record or the uh, resource management record categories and I really just threw this slide in because I find it so interesting. This is a, a hand tinted glass lantern slide from the Cedar Breaks National Monument collection uh, dating from the 1920s or 30s and um, slides like this were used to promote visitation to the park. Uh, so cultural resource objects um, fall into four categories, art, history, ethnology, and archaeology. Art objects are pretty self-explanatory. Um, these are pieces that have been made in the park or inspired by the park, and they generally come into the collection because they're historic, like this 1903 painting of Zion Canyon by Frederick Dellenbaugh, or um, through artist-in-residence programs uh, in which artists are invited to stay in the park for a set period of time and while they're there they produce bodies of work and, and one or more of these pieces will generally come into the collection. Um, in the upper left hand corner of the slide you'll see a collection of works that were um, mostly created through artists in residence programs from different parks across um, the National Park Service that uh, we brought together for an NPS Centennial exhibit in 2016 at the Atlanta airport. Cultural resource collections also include ethnology objects. Uh, ethnology collections 
um, may be from contemporary or historic traditional culture, and generally speaking, they're from cultures considered indigenous to the park. Uh, so most are Native American, um, Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian or Polynesian cultures, and these include um, pottery, basketry, clothing, and things like that. So in this photograph, um, we see all from the Zion collection, um, but in the middle, a um, basket made of woven yucca, and that's a historic ethnology object, and then some contemporary objects uh, like the dolls, the woven bead belts, necklaces, and a dress, and these were um, all made by local members of the Kaibab Band of Paiute Indians, uh, which is one of the tribes that's traditionally associated with the area in and surrounding Zion National Park. Cultural objects also include archaeological um, objects. So archaeology, um, they're considered materials recovered during authorized uh, National Park Service undertakings, either by a National Park Service or other permitted archaeologists. And these include uh, beads, bones, organic materials, uh, projectile points, pottery, uh, or ceramic sherds. And um, this slide includes some examples from um, our friends in the northeast region of the parks. Uh, so some paste seal fobs from Minuteman National Historic Park, uh, tea bowls and matching saucers from Salem Maritime National Historic Park, and a pressed glass spooner from Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania Battlefields National Military Park. History is the, the last category of cultural resource objects, and this is kind of our, our catch-all category. So these are objects that um, are not either archaeology, ethnology, or archives. Um, so these can be things like furnishings, armaments, uh, architectural features, clothing, tools, books, um, and, and even vehicles. Um, so here we've got a 19th century vernacular barrel constructed by a slave living on one of the plantations, which now makes up Cane River Creole National Historic Park. Uh, this barrel has been carefully stabilized and is being moved into a custom storage container. On the bottom left is an 1863 mountain howitzer from the Fort Sumter and Fort Moultrie National Historical Park collections. And on the right is a diary of a Civil War hospital steward who was stationed at Fort Barrancas, which is one of the fortifications now protected by Gulf Islands National Seashore. So the, the last broad category of National Park Service collections are natural history collections. Um, they can be further broken down into three subgroups, uh, biological, which um, the, the example here is the swallowtail butterfly specimen, geological, which is the uh, stalactite specimen from Hawaii volcanoes in, in the bottom left, or paleontological, which is this um, fossilized footprint from Zion National Park. So the National Park Service maintains natural history specimens primarily to document the presence of plants, animals, fossils, rocks, and minerals inside the park at a particular time. Researchers and resource managers use the information gathered in this way to make critical decisions regarding the resource management in the park. These voucher specimens document changes in species over time. They also provide evidence of environmental changes in air, water, sound, and light quality and are useful tools to monitor human impacts to the park. So here we have some um, good examples of uh, 
biological specimens. Um, in the upper left hand corner we have Kitty who is a rather unfortunate looking 19th century taxidermied Florida panther specimen from Everglades National Park and um, this is probably one of one of my favorite um, pieces in, in, in all of the National Park Service collections because I think it, well first it's just funny but <laughs> it's also a great example of um, when natural history and cultural collections collide. So um, this specimen was created by a researcher in the late 1800s uh, to be a study specimen but it's now so old that it's considered historic as well. And uh, in this photo, Kitty is undergoing some much needed conservation treatment. Um, on the right hand side, we've got some uh, photographs of fish, of fish specimens being stored um, in alcohol from the Klondike Gold Rush National Historical Park collection. Um, the last two examples of natural history collections are fossils and geology. So on the left hand side is a geologic, geological specimen of fulgurite from Padre Island National Seashore and on the right hand side is a uh, fossilized mollusk impression from Bryce Canyon National Park. So archives, natural history, and cultural resource objects, um, though that's what makes uh, National Park Service collections go around. And if you are interested in seeing or learning more about these objects, I would encourage you to get out and visit a national park, or you can virtually access museum collections from across the National Park Service at npgallery.nps.gov. So thank you so much for learning about um, National Park Service museum collections with me today and I look forward to seeing you in a park soon.